Deep in the Louvre, shielded behind bulletproof glass, lies the world's most recognizable painting. Known for its technique, composition, and symbolism, this painting was considered one of the wonders of this era. But what if I told you that the Mona Lisa was a fake? Well, you see, on August 21st, 1911, a man disguised as a janitor entered the Louvre Museum, which was closed to the public on Mondays. There were no guards present, allowing the thief to easily make their way to the Salon Carré, where the Mona Lisa was displayed. Once there, the man then proceeded to lift the painting off the wall and remove its glass shadow box. Hiding the priceless artwork under his smock, he casually strolled out of the museum and disappeared into the busy streets of Paris. No one noticed that the Mona Lisa had gone missing, attributing it to maintenance, and it was only after 26 hours where officials realized that the painting was gone. Alarms were sounded, and a frantic search for the thief and the painting began. It quickly became the headline in the paper, with police officials making a public statement appealing to anyone who had any information regarding the stolen artwork. But despite their efforts, no one came forward, and the Mona Lisa remained stolen. Da Vinci's masterpiece, which at the time was not widely known outside the art world, suddenly was a hit sensation. Every newspaper, tabloid, and person was talking about the missing painting so much that the Louvre had to close for a week. A massive investigation was underway, with hundreds of suspects searching for anything that might be a lead to the recovery of the painting. But despite all the efforts, the thief did not leave behind much, and there were only two possible leads. The first being a stairwell doorknob that was found outside the building, and sworn testimony from a plumber saying that he helped a man who, while being locked in the stairwell, took the doorknob off. And the second being the wooden frame and glass covering box of the Mona Lisa found on the staircase by a guard. Despite a thumbprint being found on the frame and the 257 Louvre employees being fingerprinted, fingerprinting was still a relatively new piece of technology in that day and age. And as the Paris police inspector Alphonse Bertillon had only 750 prints online, it made it almost impossible for him to track down the thief. The trail went cold, taking the whole investigation back to ground zero, allowing the thief to make a clean getaway. Many people were quite certain that the painting was gone forever. However, two years later, the painting re-emerged. Well, you see, as it turned out, the culprit who was later captured, Vincenzo Perugia, an Italian handyman who had a history working for a firm that cut glass for the Louvre. Despite his past violent behavior, which included arrests for robbery and carrying a gun during a brawl, it was eventually his temper and tendency for violent behavior that got Perugia fired from his job. Stealing the Mona Lisa was just his way of getting back at the people who fired him. His original intention was to sell the painting immediately after stealing it, but due to the high-profile nature of the theft, the Mona Lisa became too recognizable, making it impossible for Perugia to sell it without drawing attention. And after struggling for two years, a homesick Perugia that was worried about his family back in Italy foolishly contacted a former employer and art dealer in Florence, offering to sell the Mona Lisa to him. That was a mistake. Well, 
The official story was that the dealer, upon hearing about the painting, got suspicious and alerted the authorities, where they found the Mona Lisa hidden in a trunk at his apartment. The painting was eventually returned to the Louvre and Perugia was arrested. But was that the end of the story? Well, no, you see. When the painting was recovered, some art experts began to question whether the painting that was returned was even the real Mona Lisa. The theory, made popular by the book The Theft of the Mona Lisa by Seymour Wright, puts forth that the painting was swapped out for a fake in 1911 when it was stolen from the Louvre. Experts have gone on record to say that the painting returned to the Louvre was a copy or a fake, based on the idea that the painting does not match the known history of the Mona Lisa. From differences in the brushwork to the vibrancy of the colors as compared to other da Vinci paintings. For example, in The Virgin and Child with Saint Anne, a painting from the same period, the colors are brighter and the brushwork is more detailed when compared to the Mona Lisa. Another key piece of evidence was a handwritten note recently found in the library of the University of Heidelberg, which threw the whole story of the Mona Lisa into doubt, suggesting that Leonardo da Vinci painted the work as early as 1503, which contradicts the widely held belief that it was created during his late period. Moreover, a biographer from the 16th century claimed that da Vinci worked on the painting for only four years and then it was left unfinished. But the Mona Lisa we see today is polished to perfection, which makes it hard to believe that it was ever abandoned by the master. Some experts even believe that there might not be one, but two versions of the Mona Lisa, both painted by da Vinci. This wouldn't be a far-fetched idea, given that the artist had a workshop with many assistants, and he often allowed them to fill in the less important parts of his painting, which would have allowed him to increase his output and sell more works, while also passing on his technique to the next generation of artists. The next key piece of evidence was that in 2004, the Louvre invited French engineer Pascal Cotte to photograph the Mona Lisa using his new technique called multispectral imaging, which analyzed the painting's layers in detail. His layer amplification method, LAM for short, amplified what's inside the one millimeter layer of paint, revealing the brush strokes and techniques used by Leonardo. This method is more advanced than other techniques like infrared or X-ray analysis, which miss the story of the painting's creation. According to Pascal Cotte, his layer amplification method had uncovered hidden traces of the Carpona Tower behind the Mona Lisa's shoulders, rather than the March region between Milan and Genoa, as previously speculated by Mona Lisa experts. The tower still stands today in the province of Pisa in Italy, and other points of reference in the painting's background support this theory. For instance, what was believed to be a wide, dry path over Mona Lisa's shoulder is now thought to depict a dried-up Arno River in Pisa, where Leonardo collaborated with Niccolo Machiavelli in a scheme to divert the river's water in 1503. Based on the results of LAM, Cot claimed to have discovered the real face of the Mona Lisa, or Lisa Gherardini, the subject of the painting. He claims that the plank of poplar the Mona Lisa is painted on was used by Leonardo for another Madonna-style project. Cot theorizes that what started as a portrait of a real woman turned into the idealized figure we see today. However, the results have been inconclusive, with some experts arguing that the differences in the painting could be due to the aging and restoration of the painting. While Cote revealed the real face of Lisa Gherardini, the subject of the painting, 
It's worth noting that in 2012, a Swiss art foundation claimed to have proof that Leonardo da Vinci's painting was potentially a copy. In 2012, a Swiss art formation claimed to have proof that Leonardo da Vinci had painted an earlier version of the masterpiece, which they believed to be in their possession. This suggested that the painting on display at the Louvre may not be the original, but rather a copy of it. This revelation has sent shockwaves through the art world, raising questions about the true identity of the painting and its value. Could it be that we've been looking at a counterfeit all this time? The Foundation has claimed to have evidence that the Isleworth Mona Lisa, a painting believed to be an earlier version of Leonardo da Vinci's famous masterpiece, is an original work by the Italian painter. The Swiss Art Foundation conducted tests, including an examination of sacred geometry, carbon dating, and pigmentation tests to prove the painting's authenticity. The authenticity of a painting touted as an earlier version of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa has been disputed by some experts, but the Swiss-based Mona Lisa Foundation commissioned scientific analysis of the painting to prove its authenticity. The analysis included an examination of sacred geometry, as well as carbon dating and pigmentation tests, which were carried out after the Isleworth Mona Lisa was unveiled in Switzerland in September 2012. Despite initial doubts about the painting's authenticity, the Foundation believes that the results of the tests are definitive and its Vice President David Feldman stated that he is 100% convinced that this is a genuine Leonardo. Further carbon dating and pigment tests were carried out as well as an examination of sacred geometry by Italian geometrist Alfonso Rubino. Rubino concluded that the geometry of the Swiss Mona Lisa was the same as the Italian masters, based on his study of Leonardo's Vitruvian Man, adding more fuel to the fire that the Mona Lisa is a copy. So is it possible that the painting was swapped out or simply a copy of a lesser known work? Despite the controversy, the Louvre Museum stands by the authenticity of the painting and it remains one of the most visited works of art in the world. The mystery of whether the Mona Lisa is a fake or the real deal may never be solved. But one thing is certain. The painting's allure and enigmatic smile continue to fascinate and captivate audiences around the world.